The Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition shows the vulnerability and majesty of life on our planet through a lens. And now direct from London, this incredible exhibition can be seen at the Auckland Museum. To share what they have in store, please welcome to the cafe, Victoria Travis. Yeah, Yay. thank you Victoria for being here. Yeah. Um, before we look at the photos, uh, tell us a little bit about um, this Wildlife sure. Photographer of the Year competition. Um, it's the third time we've had it at the museum and we brought it back because we know our visitors love it. It is incredibly popular and the quality, this is the best wildlife photography in the year, um, the best wildlife photography in the world. The competition's been going for 52 years, so wow. um, it's just a thrill for us to see our visitors responding and um, just getting a chance to, to sort of see these incredible images. They are incredible, you'll see them very soon. How many entries would you get for this competition? Uh, I don't know, but I think, I'm pretty sure it's in the realm of thousands every year. They're done anonymously, the judging, that is, that all the names are taken off, and I believe the judges themselves are kept anonymous while it goes on so that they, they know mm. that they're choosing the purest shots that are the most memorable. The director who knows all said 50,000 in my ear. That is ah, impressive. Yeah, well, yes. There I'm not go. surprised. Yeah. How many on show at the museum? We've got 100 on show. They're all backlit images, so they absolutely pop off the wall when you see them. Okay, and uh, how did you manage to get the exhibition here to New Zealand? I mean, it's the third time you've brought it here. Yeah, we, we've got a great relationship with the Natural History Museum in London, and um, they tour this around the world from time to time, and they can make it better every single year. And, um, yeah, we, uh, we just respond to what our visitors love, and they really love to see this. We have an amazing sort of collection in terms of natural science as well, so it's a really good fit for us um, in terms of our collection, which is encyclopedic as well. Mm. Right, I'm well, excited. should we have a look at some of the yes, photos, yes, shall we? Look. Okay, cool. So you can talk us through some. What have sure. we got here? Oh, now this photograph here, this oh. is one of my favourites. This is like one of, it's on all the banners. This was actually taken by a nine-year-old child. What? No! Yes. He is, he's, in, he's from India and he took this on an island. These particular um, monkeys, which are called golden langurs, the, they are critically endangered. Right. Um, there's only 2,500 left in the world. Oh, and this wow. was taken on a, um, on a man-made island in a river in the Assam re region of India. And he, apparently he got off the boat and he saw this monkey, took the photograph of it just as its sort of eyes moved to the right moment and then it disappeared and he didn't see it for the rest of his visit. And it's most of these photographs you know, there are moments of spontaneity, but the amount of planning right. it takes to capture spontaneity is just incredible. I think oh, this is cute. Look, that is my favourite. That looks like a painting. It's so awesome. Isn't it gorgeous? So this is in Bristol, which I found out through this was apparently the um, UK's capital city of um, red foxes, okay. who knew. And this particular one, the photographer spent days and days getting um, getting the foxes used to him being in their territory. And then uh, he just, he set up his shot, got it ready close, Close focus, moved back, and a curious little cub happened to jump up at just the right time. To look at the chicken that he was dangling across could the fence. Be, could have been. That's a bit we don't see. <laughs> so you've got to yeah. have preparation, you've got to have patience as well. And look at this one. Who took yeah. this, do you know? Whoa. Um, now, this particular bird, which is absolutely gorgeous, and I believe it's called a golden hornbill, and I'm from South Africa, and it uses its beak uh, like we would with tweezers. It doesn't, <laughs> its beak gets in the way of having decent vision in terms of being able to to um, capture uh, things that are flying around, but what it does is it eats off the ground. So this is a termite, and and to the end of its nose, it can see really, oh, sorry, its beak, it can see beautifully, and it just very gently picks these up. That's insane. Yeah. Well, which, okay, the winning one, I'm fascinated to see uh, who won. Well, this one here is oh. the supreme winner. This is part of a documentary series. So um, the photographer in this ta case, it was at least three days, so this was taken in, Borne in Indonesian Borneo. Um, he had a vision for this shot. It took him three days of climbing up the tree because this tree is well above the canopy. So, so he, he had to climb the tree himself three times to set up three GoPros because with orangutans, they have a mental map of their forest. So right. they know where to go. The, what it's climbing on there is a strangler fig. So it's, it's in fruit. So he knew that the orangutan would be coming back again. So he set this shot up and just waited 
at just the right moment and sat down. And when he got this shot, apparently it was exactly what he had um, envisioned. Oh, that's Brilliant. amazing. Thank you yeah. so much for joining us. That's great. I'll definitely go and have a look. Isn't that incredible? Wonderful. Yeah, I'll go I mean, and have a look too. I mean, yeah, thank that, you for bringing it yeah. here again. Yeah. Uh, the Wildlife Photographer of the Year exhibition is currently showing Auckland Museum. It's free to all Aucklanders. Um, for more info, just go to their website. Excellent work. Thank you, Victoria.